Okay, in this video we want to construct the equation of a plane in three-dimensional space. But as a warm-up, I want to construct the equation of a line with a little bit different information than we usually have. So let's say we have a point x naught y naught, so that's kind of normal. But then we also have a normal vector n, which will let be the vector a, b. And what I mean by normal, this vector is perpendicular to the line. So let's sketch up what's happening here. So there's our xy axis, and let's say we know this point right here, which is given by x naught, y naught. We know this point is on the line, and let's say our line goes a bit like this. Good. And what we want to do is find some formula for another arbitrary point on this line. Using the fact that we know this vector n, which is a, b, is perpendicular to this line. So let's sketch n in this picture. So let's say this is our vector n. Notice uh, I'm drawing it so that it is orthogonal or perpendicular to our line, or another word for that is normal to the line. Good, and now what we're gonna use is the equivalent definition of orthogonality given by the dot product, and we're gonna do that by forming a vector out of x naught, y naught, which we know is on the line, and this point x, y, which is an arbitrary point on the line. We can do that by taking the initial point to be x naught y naught and the terminal point to be x y. So we get that vector right there, which I've made blue. And now notice this vector, maybe we'll call it v, is given by x minus x naught and y minus y naught. And given that it is the difference of two points on the line, we know that this is parallel to our line L. And then what we can do is use the fact that the dot product of any two orthogonal vectors is zero to take the dot product of n with v. We know that's zero, but that also gives us a comma b dot x minus x naught, y minus y naught is equal to zero, but that's going to be a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught equals zero. And there we have uh, an equation of a line. Now we could move that around and solve for y if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that because that's... Um, really not what we're trying to do here. Okay, so now what we want to do is scale this up to three dimensions. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to it. Okay, so now we're moving to the equation of a plane. So let's say we have a plane P with a point x naught, y naught, z naught, and a normal vector a, b, c, and we'll call that normal vector n. So our goal is for, to find the equation of this plane. So we'll do this, this exactly like we did for a line. So I've sketched out the plane here, and we know that this point right here, maybe we'll say this is the point x naught, y naught, z naught, we know that is a point on the plane. That's given. And then we also know that if we take a vector and we put in the vector which we know is normal to the plane with initial point right there, um, we can have this type of picture. Great. Now the next thing we want to do is <coughs> take an arbitrary point on the plane, and really we want to find an equation for this arbitrary point. So let's say this is the arbitrary point x, y, z on the plane. And notice we can use that arbitrary point and our given point to construct a new vector that is parallel to the plane. And that is given by this vector right here, which we'll call v. Great. So the first thing that we'll do is observe that um, the vector v, which is given by x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, is uh, parallel to the plane P. 
Well, notice that we get it from connecting two points that are on the plane, so it must be parallel to the plane. Great, but then since we know N is orthogonal to the plane, that means N has to be orthogonal to V. So also, vector N is perpendicular to V, or orthogonal to V. So now what that tells us is that N dot V equals zero, but then using the components of N and the components of V, that gives us A, B, C dot X minus X naught, Y minus Y naught, Z minus Z naught equals zero. In other words, we have the following, what we call scalar equation of the plane, which is given by A times the quantity x minus x naught, that's what we get from the first part of the dot product, plus B y minus y naught plus C z minus z naught equals zero. Great. And so let's box that. And that is the equation of the plane given this data. It contains this point x naught, y naught, z naught, and it has this normal vector a, b, c. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at an example. Okay, so now we want to look at this example. So let's find the equation of the plane containing these three points. P, which is 1, 3, 2, Q, which is 3 minus 1, 6, and R, which is 5, 2, 0. So if you recall, back when you learned how to write equations of lines, a lot of times you were just given two points, and then you find the equation of the line through those two points. You first you first find the slope and then you put it into a point slope form and uh, that's going to be the strategy that we parallel here. Great, so let's sketch up what's going on here. So let's draw our plane like this and then I'm going to say maybe P is right here. So this is not to scale or anything. So P is right there, Q is right there, and R is right there. And notice, just like any two points to find a line, any three points to find a plane, but that's not totally true. Any three non-collinear points to find a plane. So recall that in order to find the equation of a plane, we need a point and a normal vector, but we only have three points, we have no normal vector. So we've got more points than we need, but we do not have a normal vector. But if you notice that if we take this vector right here, which is vector PQ, and we take this vector right here, which is vector PR, each of those are parallel to our plane. So let's write that down. So observation, vector from P to Q, and vector from P to R are parallel to our plane. And by our plane, I mean the one that we want to find the equation of. Great, but that means if we take their cross product, we're going to get a vector that is perpendicular to our plane. Remember, the cross product of any two vectors gives you a vector that's perpendicular to both of them. So we can cross product them, and that will give us this vector up here, n. And so we might as well just let n equal pq cross pr. Great. So uh, let's add that to our observation, the vector n, um, which equals pq cross pr, is normal or orthogonal to our plane. Great. So what that means is we need to calculate this pq cross pr. So let's do that. So n, which is pq cross pr, and so that's equal to the following. So notice that pq is going to be subtracting q minus p. So notice that's going to give us the vector 3 minus 1, which is 2, negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4, and 6 minus 2, which is 4. So we've got that for pq, and then cross pr. So we have 5 minus 1 is 4 
2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that's the cross product that we need to do. So we can use the uh, determinant version of the cross product. So we have IJK in the first row, uh, PQ in the second row. So 2 minus 4, 4, 4 minus 1 minus 2. So that is PR in the third row. And so now we'll use our strategy for finding the cross product. So we'll expand across the first column and the first row first. And so that will give us our I component will be negative 4 times negative 2 minus uh, 4 times negative 1. So that is going to give us 12. Okay, great. And then we can expand on the second column in the second row. And that will give us our J component, but we'll have to negate it after taking this determinant. And that calculates out to be 20. And then finally expanding on the third row and the, sorry, the third column in the first row, we get 14. So there is our normal vector. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll finish this example off. Okay, so on the previous board, we calculated this n normal vector to be 12, 20, and 14, and that is the vector that is orthogonal to our plane. But notice we can scale that any way you, we want and still have a vector orthogonal to our plane, and let's go ahead and do that because notice we have a greatest common factor here so we can simplify it a little bit. So let's maybe rename this n prime, and that's 6, 10, 7 just dividing everything by 2. Because notice, if n is orthogonal to our plane, then n prime, which ends just about right there, is also orthogonal to our plane. And now, we'll write an equation of a plane using this normal vector, and then any three of these points that we want. I will maybe choose the last one because it has a 0 in it. And that will give us 6 times x minus the x part of the point plus 10 times y minus the y part of the point plus 7 times z minus the z part of the point, but the z part of the point is 0, so we get that. Okay, great, but now we can simplify this out a little bit. So we're going to have 6x minus 30 plus 10y minus 20 plus 7z equals 0. So let's see, that's going to give us 6x plus 10y plus 7z equals uh, 50 after moving everything over. And this is generally how you write the equation of the plane in the end. You simplify it until all the x, y's, and z's are on one side of the equation, and then you just have a number on the other side of the equation. Okay, so this is the end of this example and the end of the video.